<sighs> Welcome back. There's a very good reason why I did not film trying to get this trailer from the bail yard all the way down here, down the lane and in here. Because that was not fun. Checking out my poor tractor. I tried securing it as best as I could. This side took a right good thumping. That was already broken. Uh, track, this tractor is not strong enough to pick this end of the trailer up and just dolly it in. Uh, and I didn't want too much slack on this so it would come flying back and forward. So I didn't use the front end of the tractor plus that's just too much pressure on the front end. So I put it on a short leash from the drawbar to there. But boy, did this thing like to keep flipping and flopping and dinging and danging. This thing is ugly. But I cannot complain because I got it for free from my cousin who got it for free when he bought his farm. Uh, so at some point I want to take this, this plate off and rebuild it because as you can see the shaft worked its way out. So I have another shaft in from that side to hold it up. Uh, I have greased it, but for those of you who are yelling at me, we'll just take it off and redo it properly. We have a problem. Yeah, those of you who will notice what's missing there, there's no handle. So they pretty much bubble gummed and uh, locked her in. So I'm either going to have to get in there with the old plasma or the old cutting axe and cut the whole uh, lever mechanism out of there. I'm kind of just half tempted to just spend four or five grand and buy a tandem dolly, a proper one. You know, not one that's legally for the road because they're a hell of a lot more money, but you can pick up, pick up a pretty good tandem dolly for anywhere from three to five grand. And considering I spent nothing on the trailer, uh, apart from putting the farm put uh, oh, bigger rims on this that way we could get tires for it easier like cast offs from the highway um, but yeah so yeah she's pretty nasty so it broke here once before if you any of you have been here for the long run uh, you'll know that this trailer took a Took a dive off the back of the tractor once before not this tractor it was when we had the blue one i was going to pick up a whole bunch of scrap metal from one of our fields that we were selling in the big farm sale and i went over a frost boil which is a big heave in the ground and uh it pulled the pin right up out of the drawbar and uh, the whole thing shot into the ditch and when i hit the ditch it over centered and snapped off the drawbar which is there so I kind of get the feeling it was broken before it broke then, but I'm going to absolutely bubble gum it this time. And uh, then I'm going to put some triangulation. So I'll bring you back once I get further in. She's done. It's not going to win any ultrasound awards, but it's done. So yeah, <laughs> it ain't straight. Well, that's because it got bent the last time when it broke. So I would have had to cut so much off of that and I just, I don't care enough. Cause like I said, I kind of planning on changing this whole thing cause this dolly is like, yeah. So yeah, I actually even welded underneath don't judge me so i just i had started using some of the uh the big two by two stuff but then i thought just for the sake of taking the wiggle out of this this one inch square stuff probably fine just to take the shock out of the the hitch and if it breaks whatever do it again so yeah don't have to be pretty, just go to work. Just like me. So yeah, there was the fun part. I had to put a dog leg 
into the jack handle. Because to get that onto the frame for a triangulation ended up being, I made sure it was close enough that I could get the pin in and out and then I never stopped to think about the winding handle. But yeah, just cut a V out of it, bent it, welded it. It's good to go. It winds up and down just dandy. So, another project off the list. So, next one you'll be seeing probably in the next, uh, next scene, these just showed up, came from uh, well, Westward Parts, but it was uh, from my local Red Fern, so, yeah, so, uh, next project, so, Piper Dub fix, it looks like it's going to work. Uh, this is what we have. It should work. So it gives just enough room to run along this, and then there's enough room to uh, grab this. And then it's butted flat because this is sun shining. Uh, it butts up against this, at that part. So I don't know if you saw. I can't remember if I showed you that there was a box on that blue part with a big plastic block that was all worn out. They don't last very long. And then also there was a plastic wear plate on the bottom of that which had worn unevenly so this whole thing was tilting back and forward so I've just removed that completely so it's now solid so all going well it's gonna work I uh, haven't run it yet but uh, I can't see why not it'll probably take a couple of goes back and forward just to get it to war in but uh, so there you go so yeah, at some point, I have to take this whole buggy off. Because after 20 years we've had this, yeah, the pushers got a bit, a bit damaged. Um, we've, never, we've never done anything with that. Like I said, that's the first replacing that stuff. We have replaced Donald, my brother Donald, he replaced this part because it got all bent up because it takes a lot of abuse slapping back and forward because it's supposed to as you lift it up this is supposed to stand out to help you throw the bale over over and into there because it's a single arm double row it doesn't always work so then what ends up happening especially when you're doing hay bales is this gets thumped and as you can see it sort of bent its back over the stopper so this does still work but quite often it just stays down and the bales go flying over and they stop against that stuff and the other yeah, rocks are there for ballast so. so hopefully that's her well i didn't want to bore you with uh, my silly attempt at welding but uh so kind of like bcp trucking i have one of these quickie loader Euro quick attachment bale spikes and this is not to be used for haying really this is more for straw and I'm about to get into the straw and that's why I've done this so made it into a two bale picker so you'll gather one bale on the middle bring it in grab the second one and then that way when you're loading trailers it saves you half of the trips because I'm predominantly loading trailers by myself. It's different if you have someone chasing you with a truck and trailer like BCP's got uh, CP there. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I like, I like this part. Like it's on there, it's, it's right on there. Um, I didn't have the stuff the, to make the diagonals that I wanted and this stuff's kind of thin wall 
so I'm actually thinking of putting it back in the shop and running a piece of like a three inch by three eighths plate from here, like bend it around there, welding onto there, and then run it up onto the top here and welding the sides on and not welding a crossway. And that way, picking the weight of this up right from up there. This shouldn't twist out because this is like some serious wall rectangular stuff. I don't know if you can see that there. It's some pretty good strong uh, stuff that I had in my scrap pile. So, I was actually quite happy with those welds. This stuff, not so much. It didn't weld with the bugger. It's that cheap Chineseium steel. Yeah, and like I said, there's some of the cuts weren't great. So I just put it on there just so I can get out the door and see if it's gonna work well. But like I said, I might just end up putting a, a strap from there up and the same over there. I had kind of toyed with making it temporary where you could take these outriggers off or fold them up out of the way. But ah, it's gonna be so much work. Quite often, I'm carrying two straw bales for bedding, so I just gotta remember not to hit gates and things with them. So, man, it's hot. It's in the 20s somewhere. The old, the old body was not liking that. So yeah, good project today. Went and got a nice uh, second-hand drive tire for my uh, brake. It's about an inch taller than that one, and it's wider, so it's kind of skiffing there. But this this kind of wobbles in and out a fair bit, so I don't think it should be that big of an issue. But if it does, whatever, I don't care, because uh, I'm thinking I might be raking that third cut. Uh, you probably haven't seen the video yet. It'll be after this. I've already started cutting. So. What the heck's that noise? Anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be back to uh, cut. I've got the headlands done. And yeah, I'm cutting the uh, snow traps onto that field as well. So yeah, this big guy's going to be coming back out of his slumber. He was, he's had, oh, he's had like, almost a month off for crying out loud. Well, maybe not, but anyway. Supper time. How are you now? Good, and you? Not so bad. So, the last cutting of hay, last field of the 2022 season. And yes, it's this field again, guys and girls. This is the third cutting, and yes, all my bales are still out here from the second cutting. There is actually a reason to that. Kind of artistic. Uh, the reason for that is these bales, literally two thirds of them, were all in the 20% moisture. Fully. So I didn't want to bring them in and stack them. If I rather they stayed out here and just breathed. Uh, now I know I'm probably going to have issues on the ground under the bales that uh, the hay will probably be dead. But for those little spots I was willing to make that sacrifice. It'll probably fill in with grass anyway. So, as you can see, I'm leaving my snow catchers uh, in the whole field. It's going to be the whole kit and caboodle. Funny thing is I've actually seen this other... Uh, other farmers have started doing the same thing where they leave the strips. I'm not saying I invented it, but one of the first ones around here doing it. But I digress. So, um, so it's not a terrific catch. Now out there, it's really good. Uh, it doesn't look like it to the bales, <clears throat> but overall. This was a decent, I will be raking, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm doing two passes miss, two passes miss, because I'll go two into one. Kind of like I did with that other field that I just did. So, and I know I say that word a lot, so, um, kind of aiming for a bale to the acre as 155 acres. 
second cut went almost 200 bales off of the field. Uh, if I get 150, I'll be very, very pleased. Probably realistically, there's gonna be about 100 bales come off of this cut, realistically. And even at that, I'm happy, because, you know, 75, 80 dollars a bale, still a good chunk of cash, because we have all the hay we need. And uh, because it's a new stand, cutting it helps keep any of the invasive weeds down and it's actually doing fairly good there's just some spots where there's uh, dandelions and not a lot of thistle though. so I'm gonna keep going knocking this down my renter is swathing his oats so I'm kind of waiting for the nod and wink when he's gonna be combining and hopefully I can get that bailed up while this is curing down to call the rain off so get after it and if you don't hear from me again see you in the next video so you come in for supper and you're like a couple more hours and that'll be the end of cutting for 2022 get the last of the hay down that third cut tonight and then that way tomorrow I can get get up the road there because they're combining the oats on our field so I can get over there and start baling the straw and everything will just go great according to plan wouldn't it Didn't even hit anything. Come back out after supper, turn the header on. Next thing it's rattling, sparks, blade flew out. Yep, three teeth. So the actual uh, drive shafts are fine. So I've already changed, I think, four? And it's all this end for some reason. So yeah, there's another $400. Two more hours. Two more hours and I was done for the year. Last year I changed four gearboxes. This year I hadn't changed one, I thought. Well, let's see, that's the difference. All those big rocks are picked off of that field. Yeah, no. And the funny part is, three of the four gearboxes that changed last year were this reason. Teeth coming apart. Only one was actually bearings had gone out. But I'm pretty sure at some point we're gonna be replacing this whole cutter bar. Because if you see this, all the way along there's like a, a half tooth turn on every one but this header's done a couple of thousand hours so oh, that's gonna be expensive Disc bagging for 2022. Yeah, the uh, gearboxes are really straightforward. Just drop it in, bolt it in, good to go. Top it up with oil at it. So I was kind of figuring it out there between the three cuts here, the two cuts on the other hay field, 
cutting the oats and then the two other single cut hay fields and the odd bits here and there this machine cut between 850 and 900 acres this year so considering it's The swather itself is 16 years old. The header, I think, is 18 years old. Now, fair enough, it's. I think it's only got 2,600 hours on the uh, on the clock. She's starting to show her age. She made it. Another year. Sadly, because this is one of my favorite jobs on the farm. I love cutting hay when it's going okay. Not blowing gearboxes up. But anyway, it is dark, it is night, and I am heading home. Hey, darling. Yeah, don't worry about that. So yeah, we're into the straw baling quite like baling straw it's because it's fairly straightforward you just follow the roll you don't have to zigzag very often and yes the double barrel spear is working really really good really really um so the renter combine for a wee while and i think he stopped because he's run out of uh aeration bins because uh he said it was a bit tough a little bit green in some spots like some spots really ready it was actually going down as you can see it was laying over so yeah this is our field that we rent it's a half section full half section and uh yeah this is our big project i know a lot of people are not huge fans of trees i like trees especially when they're in the right place and there's a reason why I designed this system the way it is. As you can see, there's more. So, the field is split up into four long paddocks, north to south. So there's three rows splitting the field up. So these were only planted, what are we now, six years? Seven years now. So yeah, these are hybrid cotton poplars and then Scots pine alternating all the way down. And the reason for that is both trees will end up being very vertical. There won't be much in the way of lower down and if there is, we'll cut them off. Um, but this way, crops in here will be very sheltered uh, like canola and oats and stuff from the wind. And when you have a, a narrow belt like this, you're only taking about four or five feet completely, not either side, completely out of production the length of the field. So it ends up only being, I think it's less than five acres around the entire field doing this. But the benefits are huge. So yeah, I know a lot of people are not fans, but I don't care. <laughs> Because the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, as they say. But yeah, look how big these are already. See, so yeah, there's a gap at the half mile. So when you're combining, you cut a path through so you can work either side because mile long passes are not really doable. So yeah, for the foreseeable future, this field is going to be rented out. So, But yeah, these trees are really coming on. Love it! Yep, same job. Ah, oh, well, it'll make a few bales. And uh, for the most part, like here, it is dry, but uh, any low spots, the underneath is, uh, some of the leaf, but mainly the stem is just not curing down. Now it has been cold, 
Um, but I have a sneaking suspicion it's something to do with the crimper on the disc bind because I've started cleaning it uh, now that it's finished for the year. Uh, pressure washing all the inside of the header, so you got to keep turning it over to get the fresh side of the auger and the crimpers exposed. And the crimper was basically packed up with like wet dirt and uh, plant gum. So I wonder whether the uh, crimper wasn't really doing a whole lot of crimping. So I don't know how you're supposed to stop it getting gummed up like that. Like making it tighter, if that'll throw it out. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comment section can fill me in on that one. Because uh, I had found that it was really uh, surging. Like the uh, pack, the crimpers, the crimper rollers were doing a lot of banging around. I actually blew one of the bearings out. So I backed it up, the pressure off a little bit. But uh, I'm almost tempted to replace those, uh, those crimper rollers because they're older and they're starting to kind of show their wear and they're, they're uh, rubber on rubber so I'm actually wondering about trying to get a set of either a set of steel on steel or steel on rubber to try and get that stem break because uh, like I said this uh, having your alfalfa laying for a week and more at a time and having to flip it to try and get it to dry down is just not my new fun game so yeah I'm going to be uh so pitter patter let's get at her and hopefully make about a, at least a hundred nice bales out of here aiming for a hundred and hopefully ooh, bloody gophers hopefully uh these bales will get sold. We'll just uh, pile them up there at the top of the field that way that we're not double handling them all the back to the yard. But these bales here will go back to the yard because these are going to be fed to the cows when the cows move up next to the yard when we start weaning the cows off. So, so yeah, uh, that should probably be more than enough for this episode. And if I haven't already, hopefully you enjoyed it, you have subscribed and liked the channel. Welcome to any new subscribers. And uh, I'll bring you back when I'm either baling straw, baling hay, or who knows. So yeah, tell you bye.